Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am here to talk to you today about graphing inequalities and specifically inequalities in point slope form. So before you start watching this video, you should have already learned about inequalities and learned that there are different rules for the way that the inequality symbols look, right? There's rules whether we shade above, below, solid line, dotted line. And then even before that, you learned how to graph equations in point slope form. So today in this video, you're going to see how graphing equations in point slope form and inequalities in point slope form are pretty similar. The only thing that we have to keep in mind are those inequality rules that we've been talking about. So I'm going to make sure that we're on the same page here before we get started. I'm going to go over a couple things. Point slope form. When we were talking about equations, point slope form looks like y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. And remember that is point slope form because in that formula you are given a point with your x1 and your y1 and you are given a slope which is your m. Okay now remember if we had um, let's try this. If I gave you that your m was one half and I gave you a point and I said that your point was at three comma negative six, let's make sure that we could take this and put it into that formula. Make sure we know what happens with these symbols. So when I would write this, I would write y minus the y1 that I have. This would be the x one, the y1. So my y1 is a negative six. So when I write negative six, what happens to that double negative? Turns to a positive. So now this says y plus six equals my m is one half parentheses x minus the x1 is positive three. So again, I want you to make sure that we know that when there is a plus sign, in point slope form, that means that you put in a negative number. I put in that negative six right here and it changed it to a plus. Okay, that's going to come in handy today on a couple of our examples. And then I want to refresh our memory about the inequality rules. So if it is a greater than or greater than equal to, we shade above. Or if it is a less than, less than equal to, we shade, what do you think? The opposite, right? We shade below. That was the first rule. Then there's one more rule and it says, if it is a less than or greater than, we have a dotted line. And then if it is a less than equal to or greater than equal to, we have a solid line. And remember, you have to pick out of both of these, right? You have to pick. Are you going to shade above, below? Are you going to do a dotted line, solid line? You have to pick both of those rules for each one, okay? So there's two separate rules, and we're going to practice that today. We're graphing these inequalities also. So I'm going to move us right into our first slide which is actually, you're going to see this first slide here, is actually an equation. So I just want to make sure that we start with something that we know already, and we should already know equations. So we're going to start with this one, and then we're just going to see on the next two slides how it changes for inequalities, which is not that much, okay? So our first equation, we should see that it is in point-slope form. It looks like y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. And remember, when we use point slope form, we know that we have a point and a slope. And I can use those two things to graph. I need to know those two things. So I need to know what is the point and what is the slope. Well, I think the slope is pretty easy, right? It's the one right where the m is. And my slope, my m is one half. So I know that my slope is one half. We got that out of the way. Now let's look at our formula to look for a point. I'm going to look over here at the x value first because I need to know what is the x1 and the y1. So my x1 gets put in right here in my equation. 
Now, here's the thing. It says plus four. Does that mean that my point over here, my x1 is a positive four? It doesn't. Remember that first one we did on that previous slide? You had to put in x minus negative four here in order for that to make a plus sign. So really the x1 that was put in right here was a negative four because it changed it to a plus sign. The y1 that's put in, let's see over here, y minus two, did they have to put in a negative two? They didn't because it's still a minus. If they put in a negative two, what would happen is you would see a plus sign here. But since you don't see that plus sign there, you only see that minus, that means that they put in a positive two. So it's a positive two. So now that you have those two pieces of information, you can graph it, right? That's the hardest part is pulling it out of the equation. So we're gonna go ahead and graph it. I'm gonna start with my point. So negative four, two. So I'm gonna go negative four to the left, one, two, three, four, and up two. And I'm going to make my first dot right there at that point. Perfect. After we make our point, we're going to use our slope. And our slope tells us how much we rise and how much we run. And it's a positive slope, so we're going to be running to the right. So I'm going to rise one, run two to the right, and make my dot. Rise one, two to the right. Rise one, two to the right. Look at that. You're going to see the pattern. We've been graphing for such a long time now. Y'all completely got this. And I ran off the grid, so I'm gonna make sure I extend it the other way because we know that lines go in both directions. So now that I've graphed all my points, I can carefully connect these with a solid line. And remember, this is an equation. I can graph this with a solid line. Remember we did all those test points in that other video? If I put a test point into here, like if I chose this point and I substituted that x and the y, it would only be the points on the line would work, okay? None of the points outside would work because this is an equation. It's a solid line. There's only good points are on the line. So that's how I did point slope in an equation. We don't have to shade or anything like that. We're gonna move right into inequalities because that's what this video is all about, being able to put those equation skills and our inequality skills together. Here's our next one. Again, point slope form, right? That's what this video was titled. Y minus Y1 is less than M parentheses X minus X1. So now you see this is an inequality. It's not an equation, okay? So the two things that we need are our point and our slope. So let's see here. Let's pull out our point. We need to know our x1 and our y1. So if I look in this inequality here, my x1 would be right here. Now what did they have to substitute in to still keep it saying x minus six. Did they put in a negative six? No, because if they put in a negative six, remember that would change it to a plus symbol. So they had to have put in just a positive six because it still says minus. So they had to put in a positive six. Over here, y, that's supposed to be y1, y minus one. What did they put in to make that a plus? They had to put in a negative one, right? If they put in a negative one, that explains this plus sign here. That explains why it changed to a positive. So my y1 must have been a negative one. My slope is right where the m is. My slope is three over five. My slope tells us how much to rise over run. And again, it's positive, so we're running to the right. So I'm gonna start at my point, six, negative one. So I'm gonna go positive six, and down one, there is my point. And then we also need to use our slope. So rise three, one, two, three, and run five to the right. Oh, am I gonna make it? One, two, three, four, I'm gonna run off the graph. I'm just gonna put it here right off the graph. 
right? It would be about right there, but we know that we can go the other direction. That's awesome because if you go off the graph, just go the other direction. You should be able to figure out where that line should go. So instead of going up three, we're gonna go down three to the left five and make your point. And you're gonna keep going with it. Down three to the left five. Let's see if we can fit one more. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And now that we have made these dots, let's talk about this inequality because it's not an equation. Don't connect these just yet. Our symbol, if it is a less than, greater than, we will have a dotted line. If it's a less than equal to, greater than equal to, we have a solid line. So let's look at that first rule. Our inequality symbol is just a less than, there's no equal to sign underneath, so we have to choose to do a dotted line. So remember, dotted is kind of like dashed. You're going to not connect these all the way through. And whenever you turn in your work to your teacher, you need to make sure you can know that your teacher can tell whether it's a dotted or a solid line, right? You don't want to get it wrong because your teacher thought you drew a solid line. Make sure you can really tell that there are spaces in between there. The next rule, we have to figure out where we are going to shade. If it's a less than, less than, equal to, we shade below. If it's a greater than, greater than, equal to, we shade above. So now looking at that rule, our symbol is a less than symbol. So I have to pick this option to shade below. So again, I'm going to change my color just so I can make sure that my shading looks good. Shade below means go to your y-axis and everything below the line needs to be shaded. So I'm going to shade all of this section down here. Remember that we talked about what the shaded section means. That means all of these points in this shaded region would be good points. They would be good solutions. If I picked a point in here, substituted the x and the y, it would give me a true statement. If you didn't understand that, make sure you go back and watch, that, watch the Introduction to Inequalities video because we plug in so many different test points and it truly understands, it, it, it explains to you what this shaded region means and why we have a dotted line in this case. Okay, quick recap. Would a point here, that red point, would that red point be a good solution? Yes, because it's in the shaded region. Would a point up here, like this red point, be a good point? No, because it is not in a shaded region. Now here's the trick. Is this point a good point? Take a second there, is that one a good point? No because this is a dotted line. Remember, only a solid line, the points on there are good, okay? In this case, no, it wouldn't be. Only the points in the shaded region. Okay, so that was our one inequality that we did. We have one more example to do together, and it's this one. It looks pretty similar. Let's make sure we can do it. It says y minus y1 is greater than equal to 2 parentheses x minus 6. Okay, the two things that we need are a point and a slope. Just like the other examples, we're going to make sure we pull this point out carefully with the x1, the y1. If I look in my inequality here, this is the x1 over here, and it says x minus 6. Did they put in a negative 6 there? No, because if they put in a negative 6, they would have had to change it to a plus symbol. So they put in a positive 6 for that x1. Let's look at the y1. It says y minus 
3. So did they put in a negative 3 there? No, nope, right? If there was a negative 3, it would have changed to a plus. So it was a positive 3 that they put in. Our slope, I look right, oh, I didn't put it, I didn't finish it out there well. well. Let me erase that, right? I was writing out the formula there, not what we had, what we were given. Y is less than, is greater than, equal to, M parentheses, X minus X, 1. So our M, or our slope, is 2. Remember, our slope tells us how much we rise over how much we run, but in this case, what do we run? What do we put two over? You got it, right? We put it over one anytime, that whole number. So again, I'm gonna start with my point, six, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, and go up three. One, two, three. There is my point. And my slope is rise two, run one, and it's positive, so we're gonna be running to the right. We'll erase that, that way we make sure we don't get confused. Rise two. One to the right, rise two, one to the right, rise two, one to the right. I'm gonna go the other direction also, down two, one left, down two, one left, down two, one left. Look at that pattern, beautiful. Okay, now let's make sure before we connect these, it's an inequality, so we have to look at those rules. If it's a less than or greater than, we have a dotted line. If it's a less than equal to, greater than equal to, we have a solid line, right? If it has the line underneath, it's a solid line. That's how I always think about it. So my symbol here definitely has the equal to line. So I am picking this option. I am picking solid line. So I can connect all of these points with a solid line straight through them and then my second inequality rule says that if it's a less than less than equal to we shade below because it would be less than if it is a greater than greater than equal to we shade above because it'd be greater than so now let's take a look at that. This symbol is a greater than or equal to. So I'm choosing to shade above. Let me change my colors out here to be a yellow so we can shade. We're going to shade above. So if I go to this y-intercept, everything above will need to be shaded. So this big old region way up here will need to be shaded. Right, I'm coloring it in all of this section above the line will be shaded. Remember, we talk about what this shaded area means in that introduction video if you need to go back and watch it. But there is our shaded region. I'm gonna talk about just a couple test points. Would a test point here be a good test point? It would not because when you take that X and Y and you substitute it in, it would not make a true statement. Would one right here be a good test point? Nope, again, it's not in that shaded part. So would one way over here be a good one? Yes, something up here would be a good one. Now here's the trick, one right here, would that be a good test point? It's on a solid line, so yes, that would be a good solution. Okay, you can go back to that inequality, introduction to inequalities video if you need to make more sense about what those solution points mean. But we just graphed inequalities given in slope, I'm sorry, point slope form. Okay, you have graphed equations in point slope form. I think that you are great at the graphing part. The only thing that we need to make sure that we are very, very carefully looking at is pulling out this point and making sure positive or negatives, okay? So if you need help with that, always reach out to your teacher, but by now, you are a graphing expert. Keep it up, keep practicing, and always ask questions if you need them. Bye, guys.